because I have this Paw Patrol fabric. And what I'm going to do is place it on the fold and because I'm doing a puffer jacket I am going to make these about an inch thicker than what it's supposed to be normally to give into account of the puffer if you know what I mean sorry for the crying my nephew my niece are there so I'm doing an inch over into from the fold I could have done it from this side if I wanted to which I think that's what I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do it from that side I'm gonna do an inch over from here and then an inch down. I'm actually gonna do an inch and a half on the bottom. And how I come up with that is just basically kind of thinking it through. Um, yeah, just thinking it through before doing construction. So you just kind of have to put your math. Just kind of have to uh, math it out. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut two layers, right? Because I have to be able to stuff it. This is why I don't do these just talk through videos because um, the way my thought process goes is kind of all over the place. But anywho. I'm going to get my fabric things. And I'm also, you can get a fabric marker. I normally just use my Sharpie because after I do everything, it's going to be all right. So I'm going to do, I'm going to lengthen it an additional An additional inch and a half and I'm also thickening it an additional inch so I don't know if you can see that with these rulers with these rulers it has you can't really see it but with these rulers it has the um, the lines that give you that precision Y'all probably really can't hear me. The kids are being so loud. Okay. So, I'm going to take it and I'm going to draw. And even if it's longer than... Just trace this entire trace this entire pattern. Okay, so this is my back bodice, right? So I'm going to cut this twice because I need to have a lining. So, okay. So I'm going to cut this three times, right? So I'm going to cut two so I can stuff it. And then my third piece is just for my lining so that way you won't see the puffs in the fabric. Hopefully this makes sense. But I'm going to just go ahead and cut. So I can go ahead and trace the same piece 
onto my other piece. So, we're gonna get that front piece. And again, these are gonna be four separate pieces, right? So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I extended my side seam by an inch. So because I'm going to have two separate pieces, I'm going to extend this side. I don't know if y'all can see that. I'm going to extend this side seam by half an inch and then this side seam by half an inch. And then I'm going to continue to extend this side by my inch and a half. So by extending this by half an inch, I have now equaled it to the inch that I just extended it on one side. because I'm extending it from both sides and not just one. Hope oh, that makes sense. Okay, so I said I'm going to cut four of these. So I'm going to cut my two here. And then I'm going to go down and cut two more. And then when I cut out my lining, I'm only going to have Two front bodices and one back bodice. Okay. Twenty minutes. See, that's why I don't do long videos. But for my lining, I'm, I know this is blue, but I'm gonna just use regular, like black material. Oh! My satin, but I want this the muted side. It's not really muted on my. I mean, on the. Uh, Tyler can't talk on the camera, but there is one muted side and one a little more shiny. So I want the muted side. Okay. And I'm just gonna cut the lining exactly how I cut my main fabric. 
Yes. This girl. This is not going to be a voiceover. I'm going to sit. And y'all really going to watch me. I'm very much nervous. But. Because I make mistakes as I'm. As I'm sewing sometimes. So it's not always going to be. Perfection. The first time around. So. I'm always so nervous that I'm not editing it, you know, but this is real life. I don't have, so this is something for a child that is out of state, right? They couldn't measure, well not necessarily couldn't measure, but <clears throat> it was just a lot trying to get measurements for this child. So she gave me their stock size and um, I went with that and this is just how it's coming. Y'all please excuse my chair. It's talking to me and I'm not talking back. So it's trying to, it's trying to fuss with me. But it's about time for me to get another chair. Well not really because the chair works it just squeaks. It just squeaks. The only thing I don't like about satin is that it runs. And I don't really like a runny fabric. But, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do what you gotta do. for right now okay so I'm gonna take the lining pieces and just put them to the side all right so this is how I end up getting um, pins on my floor because I just throw them to the side and then when I start swiping fabric across my table, they go on the floor. Okay, so this is my back piece. My back piece. So cute. And with this, I'm just going to put... I'm going to just put it like this because you're not going to see like the inside of this anyway. So, I'm going to just line it up with both pretty sides or both main sides facing my table. And I'm going to just pin it in place. Right. So, it won't move. Now, if you are not including a lining, I don't recommend using a permanent marker for this step. If you're using a, if you're not using a lining, I would recommend either using fabric pins or um, or chalk because you can clean the chalk off. Right. All right. So here we have Our 
the pieces that we're working with. I'm just using our pins to keep them. in line so alright 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 hopefully y'all see what I'm doing okay let me move that line in out the way Okay, so now I like to be as precise as possible. As precise as possible. So, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to measure off half an inch down here from the bottom. And reason being is because when I attach my lining to this, I don't want for it to get caught up in um, I don't want for it to get caught up in what's it called? The stuffing, the polyfill. Okay. So I'm gonna take my marker and I'm going to mark off a half an inch. Okay. An inch. So always bring this together so that you're aware of the precision. Okay. Even though I'm measuring out half an inch, sometimes we may cut our stuff a little wonky. Not knowing it's been cut wonky, but it's very possible. So I like to be as precise as possible, whether this is a kid's outfit, whether it's my grandma's outfit. I like for it to be as precise as possible. Okay, so this half an inch has been measured, right? So now, from here on out, I'm probably going to do my um, my puffs are probably going to be, I would say about three inches apart. No, I'm gonna say four for this one. I'm gonna say four. So I'm gonna do four, eight, well, why don't you do three and a half? And you just kinda gotta play around with your measurements. is I'm basically going to draw a line at every three and a half mark. With this one, I actually think 
that it's going to be a little bit thicker because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay stitch this about um, a half an inch around the neckline so that way this full puffer will kind of equal the rest of this. So whatever I do to my back, I'm going to do to my side pieces. I'm going to do half an inch stay stitches going from no yeah I'm going to do half an inch stay stitches going around each one of my um, armholes, my neck holes, just the front side of my bodices, of my front bodices, and then of course at my half an inch line. For my back piece, I'm just going to do half an inch at the neckline in my um, armholes down one side because I need room to be able to stuff it in. So down one side here and then at my half an inch line. So really for my back bodice, I'm going to do just half my side in my neckline. So my neckline, one side of my armhole, my half, uh, one, one uh, side seam, and then my half inch mark, I'm going to stay stitch at half an inch. I just need one side to be open so that I can stuff it which is the same thing with this so I'm going to do my neckline my front and my half an inch line this side I'm not going to worry about right now until I get done stuffing it then I will close it up and I'm going to do the same here my neckline my front and then my half an inch line I'm going to do just a straight stitch stay stitch once I do that, I'm going to stitch each line, stitch each line, and then I'm going to go into each side and I'm going to start stuffing it. And I'll show you that process. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'll show you that process. Alright, so I kind of have y'all in an awkward spot because I need to be able to sew. So again, I need to have one of my sides free, right? So what I'm going to do is, this is one of my side pieces. I'm going to stay stitch the neckline and then I'm also going to stay stitch one of my side seams and then my half an inch mark here. Normally you would use corresponding thread, but I want the contrast today. So I'm gonna use red because I do have some red in my fabric. So I'm gonna do half an inch. And I'm gonna go around the neckline. Okay, so remember I told y'all to stay stitch the armhole? I don't want to do that right now because I'm sitting here thinking that I think I'm going to get rid of this very, very top um, line that I made and just make this one thick puffer. And then the rest of these are going to be puffers as well. So when you're sewing, you kind of make adjustments as you go as well. So... Don't get mad at yourself if you're looking at it and you're like, mm, this ain't looking right. It's okay. As a seamstress, if you're not making adjustments, you're not doing it right. That's my motto.
whether you believe me or not. I had somebody tell me, so I posted a video, the DIY Congress, and I had somebody comment and she said, she, he, I don't know what it was, but commented and said, girl, bye, this video wasn't nothing but um, math. And I'm like, sewing is like 80% math, 20% construction because you're constantly making adjustments and you're constantly doing things. Like you're constantly scaling things. So if you're not taking into consideration um, math and numbers when you're when you're constructing, like, I know for a fact your stuff is not coming out right. Like, you have to think about numbers when, when you're sewing. You just have to. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. You can't just go blindly into a sewing project and not think about numbers. But anyway... That's me, and now I'm stitching each puffer stitch. I don't know if you could really tell, but you can, can you see the red lines? I think it's so cute. So that's why I decided to do the red lines. So now I got my layers done. So I'm gonna take it over here and I'm gonna stuff it. All right, so I went to my local Hobby Lobby and you're probably gonna be like, why so big? It was a deal, like I think I got it for, I don't know, oh, $14.99. I don't know if all Hobby Lobby sell it for that price. But it's a big box. It's um, because I was gonna order it on Amazon. Then I went in there. It's five pounds, so I got that. And all of these is teddy bear stuff. It could be messy. So all of this is teddy bear stuffing that I'm going to stuff into. Hey, Jay. Look at the gecko, mother. This was Mommy, mommy, mommy. You can show I got it. I got it. Oh, my toy. I got it on my toy. Where's gecko? Can we just. Not right now, no. Gecko's not here. Gecko's not here. Okay. Battery's about to die. That's cute. feel it I'm gonna feel it now that sucks now I gotta wait for this to, to 
Anyway, I'm gonna fill it. So I'm probably gonna end up coming back and it's already gonna be filled. And then we'll start from there. I don't have another battery. That sucks.